Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about Kalkwasser. So lately I've been getting a lot of questions and seeing a lot of discussion around Kalkwasser or calcium hydroxide. It used to be, back in the day, a really popular way to uh, increase both calcium and alkalinity in reef tanks. But then with the advent of two-part dosing and uh, I think just the trend in the industry in terms of what products were marketed and sold and pushed by um, the industry, Calcosa seems to have gone a little bit out of fashion. There's also some myths and misconceptions around Kalkwasa, and some of them are based in old truths, but we need to reassess whether they're still true to this day. And um, a lot of people just don't really have a good understanding of how Kalkwasa works and the best way to use it in a reef tank. So I'm gonna go through the pros, the cons, the different ways you can use it and why you might wanna use it. First off, why would you wanna use Kalkwasa? Well, it's one product, it's a white powder that when dissolved in RO and dosed to your tank adds both alkalinity and calcium to the, water, to the reef tank in a balanced way. Meaning the ratio of alkalinity to calcium is going to be roughly in line with your tank's consumption. Another big benefit of Kalkwasa is that it increases the pH of your tank, which for many reefers is actually the primary reason why they run Kalkwasa. Another benefit of Kalkwasa is that it binds phosphate. Now it's generally not going to be sufficient in this reaction to be able to control phosphate entirely within your tank, but it does help and it can offset some of the requirements that many reefers have for running large amounts of GFO. Now one of the big benefits to Kalkwasa is its price. It's really, really cheap. I use the Seacam Kalkwasa because it's easy to get on uh, eBay. Um, but you know, a lot of LFSs will stock CCAM, so you'll probably be able to get it from your LFS as well. And it's price per kilo way cheaper than most other solutions on the market. And remember, it's doing alkalinity and calcium and pH all in one. It won't do magnesium, so you'll need another solution for your magnesium, and it won't do trace elements, so you need another solution for that as well. But yeah, a few teaspoons of that a week or um, you know, a, a, maybe a cup or a half cup of it in a reactor once a month, and you're probably good for most pretty large tanks with pretty high consumption. There are some downsides to Kalkwasser. The first being its saturation. It's not particularly potent, meaning, for example, with your two-part solutions, typically they're at uh, you know, a concentration of maybe 100,000 ppm per litre, or even more than that. Uh, it's possible to get two-part solutions really, really concentrated. Kalkwasa, on the other hand, is way, way less than that. So for a normal tank, the dosage of Kalkwasa, typically if you're trying to use it to meet the consumption of your tank, is going to be measured in litres rather than in you know, tens or twenties of millilitres. So you, you're just dealing with a vastly larger amount of liquid. Another downside to Kalkwasa is the risk associated with an overdose. Because of the large quantities of Kalkwasa that need to be dosed to most tanks in order to have an impact, uh, the typical dosing, dosing methods are via a drip system or an ATO pump or something like that. And if you ever have an accident whereby that drip system fails or the ATO pump gets stuck on, which with ATOs, is, there's a myriad of different ways where that can sometimes happen, the risk of overdose on smaller tanks can be fairly high uh, and an overdose would shoot your pH really, really high and could kill everything in the tank. On bigger systems like mine, that risk gets diminished because the amount of Kalkwasser that would need to be dosed is um, pretty large in order to have a negative impact on the tank. They have much more capacity to buffer uh, than, say, a smaller volume of water. And this kind of draws into where some of the myths of Kalkwasa are. There, there seems to be prevalent myths online that Kalkwasa is really dangerous. And when used improperly, I think any dose into your tank can be really dangerous. It's just that the failure points with Kalkwasa back in the day were fairly regular failure points, aka ATOs getting stuck on and people using Kalkwasa in their ATO reservoir. 
technology's come a long way. The systems that we use for managing our auto top off are better than they were. And whilst these risks haven't gone away entirely, there are a number of things you can do to mitigate it, including just using well-maintained and good quality ATOs with fail safes to prevent overdose. Another big disadvantage of Calcwasa is that it's really messy. Uh, it, because of its low solubility, in that really only a couple of teaspoons of Calcwasa will completely dissolve in you know, three or four liters of water. Uh, most people will dose more Calcwasa into their reservoir than can be dissolved. And then as that reservoir gets refilled with RO water, more and more Calcwasa will continually get dissolved. However, Calcwasa is just a messy substance. It causes a lot of precipitation in the reservoir. It will cause um, buildup on the sides and the surface of the reservoir. This white scum, I guess, will just build up over time. Now, it's not inherently dangerous or bad in that, it, except that it just literally is messy inside the reservoir. And if you're using any mechanical components in those reservoirs, it, Calcosa will shorten their lifespan which is why my biggest recommendation with Calcwasa is to always configure it in a push configuration rather than a pull, which means you're pushing water into the place where the Calcwasa is and then having it come out the other side without a pump ever actually touching Calcwasa laden water. And then this brings me to the most modern way to run Calcwasa and that is through a stirrer reactor. Uh, these reactors are designed in such a way that they're predominantly airtight, if not fully airtight, it just depends on the exact design. This helps keep the Calcwasa fresh because exposure to oxygen will weaken the strength of Calcwasa. It also keeps the mess contained in a reactor that's designed to hold it. And it also allows you to supersaturate the reactor, meaning you put way more Calcwasa in the reactor that can possibly be than can possibly be dissolved in the water volume of the reactor. And then as you're pushing new RO water into this reactor and the fully saturated Calcwasa contained within the reactor is then pushed out of the reactor and into your tank according to your dosing methodology, then that new RO is going to cause a little bit more of that undissolved Calcwasa that's stirring at the bottom of the reactor to dissolve every time. So essentially you can make the Calcwasa way lower maintenance the way I used to run Calcwasa on my old tank was I had this big 25 litre drum which was my RO reservoir and that you know, on my old tank was about a week of evaporation from my tank and so every week I would have to fill up that reservoir and I would put a few teaspoons of Calcwasa into it. You know, quite a manual process, it was quite messy because that reservoir would always get really messy. Uh, the pump for the ATO was sitting in the reservoir because it had to based on that configuration and while it worked really well It did cause those pumps to fail from time to time due to the caustic nature of Calcwasa And it just created a lot of mess and a lot of manual labor when I switched to the Calcstirrer reactor I was able to automate my RO reservoir because I no longer have to add Calcwasa to it every week and I was able to hold a heap more Calcwasa in a Calcwasa stirrer reactor than I ever could in a reservoir because the constant stirring allows that fresh RO water that's being added to the reactor to become saturated, dissolve just a little bit more Calcwasa every time. So now I'm able to hold a month or so worth of Calcwasa in the reactor and it contains that mess and it never comes into contact with any comp mechanical component. Now one way to run a Calcwasa stirrer would be through your ATO meaning you have your ATO before the Calcwasa stirrer with its source of RO, whether directly from um, a tap on your RODI system or from a pure RO reservoir that you keep. And then that pushes that RO through the stirrer and then into your tank. Now that would be a variable dosing uh, regime, meaning however much your tank evaporates is how much Calcwasa would be dosed. Now it's not gonna be massively variable day to day, but it will be variable season to season. Uh, and for many tanks, this is perfectly fine. As I said, Calcos is not particularly strong, but it, you will note that in certain months, your tank would sit at a higher alkalinity than other months based on the evaporation of your tank. And so you'd have to be okay with that. Or you can use other methods to supplement Calcosa, 
such as a calcium reactor or two-part uh, in order to try and get that stability. Another way to run Calquasa is to have a dedicated dosing pump. And that's the way I run it. I just have a simple single head dosing pump which pushes into the reactor. It doses 24 times a day. And I think at the moment I'm dosing about two liters of Calquasa a day. This is most of my RO needs for the evaporation of my tank anyway. So my ATO doesn't work particularly hard at all, but it does provide that consistency. So when the evaporation does increase, the ATO can pick up the slack, but the amount of Calquasa being dosed won't ever change. It's just a solid two liters a day don't, uh, split equally over 24 doses. And I think this is the best way to run it. It's the lowest maintenance. It's got the lowest chance of failure because a single head dosing pump is very unlikely to get stuck on, particularly more modern ones, um, which are run through smartphone applications and the like. It's also in a push configuration, which means that dosing pump never comes into contact with Calquasa. The overflow of the reactor simply just goes straight into the sump, into a high flow area of the sump, and then into the tank. One thing to note, a tank like mine would never be able to run entirely off Calquasa. I would need to dose probably seven or eight liters of Calquasa a day to a tank like this in order to meet the demand. And that's far more than the tank can evaporate. So if I did that for a long period of time, the salinity would drop and then the tank would overflow. Um, so I do need my calcium reactor and, or two-part dosing in order to supplement that. However, the benefit to running the Calquasa is that it, one, it offsets some degree of the need for um, my two-part or my calcium reactor, which means they're not working as hard as they otherwise would be. And two, it's got that really good pH buffering effect, which particularly for those of you running cal calcium reactors is super beneficial to the reef tank. Also, there's that small effect of reducing phosphates a bit because Calquasa will bind a lot of phosphate in the water. Doesn't eliminate my need for GFO, but it certainly would reduce it. One thing to note about Calquasa is it is very corsic once mixed with water, meaning it will essentially melt the skin on your fingers. So always wear gloves and be careful when, uh, when handling it. The Calquasa reactor or stirrer that I'm using is the uh, Avast Marine K1, but there's lots of others on the market. Uh, I know there's one made by Two Little Fishies. I think Deltec makes one. There's another one from Sea Torch, I believe. Uh, lots and lots of brands are releasing um, Calquasa stirrers, or you can make your own quite easily. I saw a project online, I think by Mez Fletcher, where she disassembled a microwave and used the, uh, the rotating motor from a microwave in order to make her own Calquasa reactor. Uh, so you can really get creative. They're not particularly complex pieces of equipment. Water goes in, water goes out, and there's a stir bar in the bottom that's constantly slowly mixing the Calquasa. Anyway, that's all for today. If you've got any questions about Calquasa, put them down in the comments. I'm not a total expert on it, but I have been running it in a number of different forms for about three or four years now. So I, I do know my way around it a little bit. And it certainly is something that can take a little bit of time to get your head around. So post any comments at all down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the ReefNode YouTube channel. Bye for now.